Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All parties have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Deputy Thomas. It's a tough case. Yes, it is. You lost your son. I did. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you, Judge Ross. And Dean Davidson has a position that he feels very strongly about. And so now we have to figure out, should he have to pay that $1,025 on behalf of the college? Yes, sir. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm suing Dean Davison for $1,025, as you mentioned, right. due to the cost of changing a venue for my son, Travis's, memorial service. All right, so you had a memorial service planned for your son, Travis, yes, sir. at the college. Yes, sir. Travis went to the school. Yes, he was attending the school as a student. He left and went started again. And he was also on staff at the school. And you knew who Travis was? Yes, I did. He was uh, a fine young man. That's all I can say. And let's talk about how he ultimately passed away. There is a nasty, nasty disease called amyloidosis. It attacked my son's digestive system, his nervous system, and his organs. Mm -hmm. He originally had wanted to donate his organs if and when he passed away later in life. But that unfortunate, tragic disease uh, took my son very early in life. Right. And um, he suffered immensely through a lot of pain. However, he still attended his classes. He was still on staff. My baby had also approximately a 1,500 member following, all of whom were members of Safety Nest. What's Safety Net? Safety Net is an organization that is on approximately 75 campuses. Our campus is one of those campuses. My son worked diligently on those campuses. What, on what's this the purpose campus. of Safety Net? What is it It about? is to supply, in essence, a net for all of the students who attend the college, the Christian college, who are having challenges, being bullied, um, not being able to present themselves as who they are, right. having alternative lifestyles in and men really what, and women. That's really what we're talking about. Yes, it is. Travis was gay. Travis was gay. And he was at a Christian college. He was attending a Christian college. And that was a conflict for you. No doubt about it. Let's talk about that. Um, he, was a, he was a fine student, and I'm, I'm sorry uh, about your son. Um, but this is a Christian college, and we have guides and principals that we have to adhere to. Um, the night that was in question, I got a call late night that, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to cancel the services. Um, and so I had to... Because he had already passed away, and the services were going to be held at the college. Yes. You, you all were not going to charge him because he was a staff person and he was a student there. Yes, but I got a call at the ninth hour that, unfortunately, that it was not going to happen. Um, but what, what was the call? The call basically was to inform me um, from some of our, our higher benefactors that uh, they didn't approve of the lifestyle and of having... How did they know about his lifestyle? Uh, was they, he open about his homosexuality? Yes, sir, he was. Well, we noticed the obituary, and because of the obituary, it informed us of his alternative lifestyle. So what we, was it about the obituary that informed you? Well, it, in there it indicated, you know, that he was, you know, married to a man, which we, we weren't totally weren't aware of. So once we found that out, I, I got a call and up until we, that point, you didn't know anything about his lifestyle not, or not anything at all. else. You didn't have a clue. Coming up, the obituary, what it was, the the program. Yeah, program. That's what you're referring to. Exactly. And in reviewing the program, it's mentioned that he was married to a man. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So let's talk about that. In the obituary, you obviously had some role in writing it out. Absolutely, as did Travis's husband. Okay, and uh, he was also going, planning on being there, obviously. Absolutely. Your Honor, uh, just to reiterate on what the dean has mentioned, he and I had several conversations. You and the dean? Yes, about the, holding the memorial at the venue. He was also aware that my son was openly gay my son was in charge and had served on several programs that catered to the alternative lifestyle student. And you're saying you were not aware? Was not aware at all, no. 
Had you been aware, would you have even allowed the memorial to take place? Um, I would have considered it, but um, based upon our code of conduct and our Christian values, unfortunately, no, we would not have. Because it would make sense to me that had he known beforehand, he may not have authorized it anyway. Because if we're at the point where the program is delivered at the memorial, then the inference is that everything was okay until they read that program. Fair enough? Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. And so how much time was it before the program was to commence when you got this? The 11th hour, my child, my son, was denied a eulogy and a memorial at the college campus that he had served so diligently. And I, I take he it you was had not invited. allowed to be there. He and his 1,500 students of the same lifestyle attend that college. So a lot of these students were also planning on coming to the memorial. Absolutely. So you couldn't have it there. No, sir. I had to scramble. I did Travis's husband and many of the students who are members of Safety Net. We all pulled that together. I wasn't able to continue my mourning. I wasn't able to give my attention to the students who needed me to stand strong right. because of someone's because you're personal in the, belief. You're in the process of, this is a memorial. I'm going to have to deal with the emotions of saying goodbye in this memorial. Because it wasn't the actual funeral. And that funeral. was pulled was, from under me. I understand. Thank you. That was taken from under me taken from under us, taken from under the 1,500 students who attend under the same program I with the same lifestyles, Your Honor, at and the 11th hour. What did you end up doing instead? I wound up finding, we wound up finding the actual church that had married my son and his husband. You were able, they, they allowed The it. actual church embraced us they were devastated. At the church, we had, as I said, the 11th hour to tell all the students and faculty who wanted to attend, to, it was being moved to the church. The $1,000 The $1,025 is the church because charge of the cost mm -hmm. of moving, changing all of the whole program from did the, the church flowers also to the charge podium. you to have it at that facility? Yes, and I the understand. church did too. Right. The podium and you're saying and at everything. this point, because I, I know you're emotional, I'm not I'm cutting sorry, you off. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I, I, I wanted to stand strong for this. You're, being, you're, you're, you're standing strong, I understand. This is very emotional. And I'm, I'm wanting to make sure that we are all aware of what we're talking about here. We're really talking not about $1,025. Of course no, not. It's not. not about the money. Not at all. We're talking about you feeling as though, I think, that that was taken away from you in a way, Completely. in a time, in a manner that didn't feel necessarily spiritual. Not only did it not feel that way, Dean Davis and I have spoken a half dozen times in reference to my son, in reference to how wonderful it would be for the people who knew him, who were guided by him, and who guided him, as did some of the staff, to have the memorial on the campus. Coming up on a... Had he hid that information from the program, the memorial would have continued. That's true, but since we found out that it was true, we had to upstand to our Christian, uh, this is a Christian so campus. It doesn't change the fact that he was married to this man and that he was attending a Christian campus and he worked there. Really, the issue was, how dare you broadcast it? That's an issue, you're correct. Yes, Your Honor. That's correct, yes. how broadcast it because um, we have to uphold to the benefactors our Christian Bibles, well, and also the Bible condemns homosexuality. Let's just be honest, and we and have to go by the Bible. Is and there what anything our about the campus, that, Dean? That's the truth. I is apologize. there anything that he's saying that he hasn't been consistent with, or the college hasn't been consistent with? Of all the schools that Travis could have chosen to go to, he chose to go to a school that is maintaining these traditional Christian 
values. He's working at an institution yes. that says we uphold traditional Christian values. Yes. So to some extent, didn't he acquiesce in their ideology? He attended the school, openly gay, as I said, as did 1,500 student, other students. I, no, you've made that point. What, I, what I'm saying is if you weren't attending with him and the average person on a campus is just going about doing their own thing, and there are all these other students. You're yes. saying he was open, but what the dean is saying is, but he wasn't open to us. He was. That's, that's true, Your Honor. He because on a typical day, if he doesn't have any reason to think he's gay, because if he had a reason to think he was gay, based on what he's saying, he would never have allowed the memorial. It's actually in our code of conduct. We, we just totally disagree with that. It's in the code of conduct. It's I in beg black to and differ. white. I beg to differ. It's well, here's the white. issue that you're saying. Differ. You're challenging the dean of the school on conduct that the institution is built upon. That's correct. And yet you're choosing, not necessarily you, but Travis chose to go to that school. He did, Your Honor. And so why did he choose to go to a school whose code of conduct discusses their view on homosexuality? Your Honor, there are approximately 75 schools who have programs and I'm students. talking about this school and your son. He chose, Why did he choose to go to the school that says, this is how we feel about homosexuality. This is what we believe in. Whether you like it or not, this is how we roll. Right? Yes. If you don't want to go here, go somewhere else. Exactly. But if you come on this campus, this is how we are going to have this environment. He not only knew that, he worked in the environment. Yes, he did. So to some extent, how do you justify being angry and wanting to sue them when they're being very consistent? Actually, they're saying, this is, we're not allowing this. They did allow it. Um, actually, that Your Honor. That doesn't make sense to me. Coming up on. If they allowed the memorial to take place. Yes. And then they said, oh, we didn't know he was married and engaged in this sort of behavior. It's off. Then the inference is clearly they didn't know. So I don't care what you say. I'm basing it on their actions. You're interpreting what you think they know, but he's telling you he's gay. That memorial will not take place on this campus because we don't believe in that. He's not being ambiguous about it at all. He's being very straight with you. Today, sir. Today. Well, Ma'am, I, okay, I understand. We did have you this have conversation. You have decided that this is what happened. I'm someone who's looking objectively. Yes, sir. A Christian campus that says we do not believe in homosexuality is not going to say we're okay with you being a homosexual and we're okay with you having a memorial service. If they're saying as soon as we found out, we said no. That's very consistent. What I have is inconsistency with Travis. I have a young man who is married to a man who is gay, who has decided to go to this particular school. Yes. He has the choice of going to other schools. The school is saying, we're not changing. He says, fine, and now I want to work with you at the school. So there was something going on with Travis where he was like, I want to have this sort of Christian traditional faith. He was a Even Christian. though it doesn't necessarily square up. With my lifestyle. With the lifestyle. Judge. So the issue becomes, are you entitled to the monies? Because the school, being a Christian school, is saying we are not deviating from our principles. And our code of conduct. And our code of conduct. I get that. I went to a school called Morehouse College in Atlanta. It has a strong religious foundation. Recently, the school came out and said, because it's an all-male college, some of the male students had started wearing dresses to the classrooms and carrying purses. Very small number of students. The school said, we're not having that. It's an all-male college, and we have this conservative Christian background. That's not going to happen. The students who wanted to engage in that behavior wear nail polish and heels, they were outraged. So the school said, 
fine, go somewhere else. But you're not going to do that up in here. You can't make people change if that's how they feel, especially when it comes to this area of religion. No matter how much you think they're right or wrong, you can't make them change. So based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, the gavel has to come down in favor of the defendant. Because if that's their faith and that's their belief and they don't want to change it, the law cannot make them change it in regards to what happened in this case. Your Honor, they accepted my son on the, those bases. You're not hearing me. I hear you, Your Honor. I promise I do. So this is what I need you to hear. Your matter's dismissed. Case closed. Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim is denied.